never in a million years I spoke to Tony English today, uh, Nicky Smith yesterday, and you go, blimey, it's frightening. But, you know, the key to the whole thing happening, Paul Roberts phoned me three weeks ago. He said, big fella, all the lads are still alive. Glenn, when you put it in that perspective, you think, Jesus Christ, we are all still alive, all fit and well. So uh, it'll be a, it's going to be a great night, Steve Green. I phoned Steve after talking to Robbo. Robbo had an idea about taking the lads to London. I went, you know, Robbo, I think it's the 30th anniversary. We had a decent due for the 20th. I said it should be recognised probably to a better level. Steve Green, Jeff Dewing, they all got on board and went, boom, let's do something special. And Glenn, it will be special, mate, I tell you. Yeah, well, well, we'll talk about what you've got planned in a couple of moments' time. But you, you yeah. look back 30 years ago, you only took over in the summer ahead of the season, before that season. They, they'd finished as runners-up the year before to, to Barnet. So what was the plan when you came in and, and took over? It was your first managerial job, after all. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was 32, getting on 33. Ian Atkins did a bunk and went to Birmingham, which obviously suited Ian at the time. There was only two people that could possibly do the job from the inside. It was me and Steve Foley. Now, Steve had done it three times before as a caretaker. He didn't fancy it. I mean, Glenn, Jesus Christ, did I fancy it. What a stepping stone. And looking back at the end of the season, we've only done the double. Scored 129 goals in all, all tournaments and played some great, great football. I watched the extra thing on Facebook the other day against Alan Ball when they were in the Football League. Mate, Glenn, we played some stuff, I've got to tell you. And we won it the right way, which was, which was brilliant. Yeah, the, the plan seemed to be if they score four, then then we'll score five. How important was it when you took over in that summer? How important was it and how, how strong was the message to you that, look, th this club's got to get back in the Football League as soon as possible or it could be in trouble? You know, I spoke to John Waldron, I think, yesterday, the day before, and we spoke about the same thing. I had a fear if we didn't get out of it. James Bowdy, God love him, had no money, but he came and fronted the whole thing. He was unbelievable to work for because he just let me get on with it. And I look at what goes on in football now, Glenn. Guess what? Someone's got the manager's job in the football club because he knows more than every chairman and every director. So let them manage. Because we had no money, we had nothing to work with. I knew a couple of lads that came in, like Little Cookie. I signed Paul Roberts for 742 quid, a magnificent <laughs> signing for me and the club, um, because we had no money. So it was, guess what? All hands to the pump. I told the lads, Glenn, this is word for word, mate. When uh, I got the job midweek, there was a Halstead pre-season training for the reserves. So I told all the first team to be there. Bloody blood, I got the job in the afternoon. Went down, saw all the lads. They sprayed my car in champagne at the bottom of the hill as I'm turning right to go to the grounds of the game. All the first team lads. And afterwards, these word for word, I said, chap, we're going to play. We have to play from the back. We're going to play it on the deck. We've got no players to battle it out like Lincoln and Darlington did because they were big, physically strong. Ian Atkins tried it but hadn't got the players. He said, listen, watch what we do. We'll pass people to death. We'll outscore people for death. And guess what? We'll have the biggest boon up of our lives. We were drunk, Glenn, for 10 months. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard various stories. I'm sure people have. They're, they're legendary uh, around Colchester Town Centre, uh, certainly, Roy, where, where you and that squad are very, very uh, well remembered. As it turned out, that approach of, look, we, we're just going to go out and we're going to have great fun and we're going to score as many goals as we can. As it turned out, you and Wickham going head-to-head, -head, it was so important. Yeah. You did score all those goals, wasn't it? Glenn, looking back in hindsight again, because they, they chased us up. What people forget, Glenn, because we got to the FA Trophy final... I think in the last 14 or 16 days of the, the Conference League, we played something like six or seven games. And we didn't lose a game, mate. We, we drew 4-4 at Macclesfield. It was where the players had bought into me. Yes, they loved me because I looked after them. That's all you need to do with players. The camaraderie between the players, the fans and the whole club, that carried us through, Glenn, because we were like frightened. We were almost invincible, as soon as it sounds. And as the running came in, game after game, the, the, the strength and bond of the players and the fans all together, that got us through, mate, I'm telling you. So, just before we talk about what's planned for May, then, you, you look at your two former clubs, at the, uh, two of your former clubs, in Colchester and Southend, you, you, you must watch on a little bit disappointed at the moment where, where the respective clubs find themselves. Yeah, Glenn, it, listen, mate, it shouldn't happen. You look at the fan base. I know under Robbie at Colchester, it's got worse and worse. You can't even get tickets for home games from what I see on the social media. 
you have to go and sit next to Tom, Dick and Harry. Listen, the whole thing about football, when I was there, it was a camaraderie, players, fans, family, blah, blah, blah. Now, the thing down at South End where they're getting, I don't know, six, seven thousand at home, taking a couple of thousand away. Do you know what, Glenn? I said it to Jonathan Walden about in the newspaper. One thing about football will never, ever change, and it doesn't really, these iPads and you've got to do this, do that, and this non- nonsense playing from back. The game will never change. You keep the ball, pass it, look after your teammate. Glenn, you, the fans will never, ever lose their heart at their football club. And I said the other night, I said, you know what, if someone put Robbie on the spot, I'd put him on the spot, Robbie, please, please look me fully in the face, look me in the eye and say, is your heart totally with this club? Because if it isn't, do everyone a favour, wipe your mouth and walk. I'd say the same to Ron Martin. People's hearts and, and the football clubs, guess what, players have got heart, like my team at the time, they had the love for the club, the fans, the whole kit and caboodle. If your heart isn't 100% in it, you should just walk away. Yeah, they're tough times at the moment for both of our clubs. We hope there's a, a, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. The cultures are showing some times of life and South End 6 unbeaten. Yeah, yeah. So just finally, just finally then, Roy, May the 7th, how can people get involved? What's going to happen? What's going on? You know, when Robbo gave me, I said, look, I said, give me a week. Let me speak to some people I know and see what we can organise. I found Steve Green straight away, Greenspear. I knew Steve in his contact. Steve went, he said, big fella, great idea. Give me a couple of days. It's come back the whole evening's top draw it's at the town hall when we had the civic reception never been seen before at Colchester the open top bus it's at the right venue it's involved it's been organised by the right people 99.9% of the players have already confirmed they'll be there that's the whole squad uh, I think Glenn I'm going to fly back obviously with my wife it's going to be a proper recognition of what we did which we made history 30 years ago and you know what you have to say we're all still alive we can all have a beer or six and you know what? It's going to be a fantastic night. But to, to get involved or get your tables and your, your tickets booked, go on to Steve Green's or my Facebook social media thing, and it's a very simple um, It's a simple way. Just pay for tickets, you're done and dusted. There's only about 120, 130 available for fans at the venue because it's obviously not the biggest in the world, but it's a town hall. So you need to be a bit lively. 